who might be new here, which there are a few. Lightning talks means five minutes and you are cut off the end. No, no way, I have one more sentence to say. That is the end and we have a timer made by the lovely Ryan. Where are you? Is Ryan in here? He made us an awesome timer with this year's theme where the sun sets and then you are cut off. No slides, five minutes, and we are ready to go. So who's up first? All right, so first up we have Alina. Alina? Alina Kazi. It's going to be talking about El Elevate Your Apps, Apache Royale in Action. We're going to hit go, and good luck. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Alina Kazi. I'm Apache Royale City Governor. I have been working for Royale for the past seven years. And uh, Adopt Next has some announcement in back in 2017 that the end of life is going to happen in December 2020. So the entire companies who have made their applications in Adoplex, either they have option to throw, throw it in the dustbin or they have the option to move some other front-end technologies. So uh, the coding uh, in uh, Flex, Adoplex is really an XML and action script. So those for those who had to migrate their application, doing some effort moving to the Angular or any other front-end technology, was a huge thing. For, it, for example, if a company had 3,000 3, or 5,000 NSML and action script files, it, it would be very hard for them to migrate such a sort of application to any other thing. Where Apache Royale comes in. And by this application, though the adopt Flash application used to run in Flash environment and Flash browsers only, uh, so once the adopt Flash stopped supporting those stuff, and Apache Royale had the option to migrate the application and then we can run that application on multiple browsers and devices. I had some presentation but unfortunately I could not show it here. Uh, if anybody is interested in uh, knowing more about it, I have some posted some uh, videos also on my YouTube channel that is Alina Kali YouTube where you can find more about this technology and all it is like if, if anyone who is interested in new development with some front-end technology they can acquire, to, they can adopt to choose Apache Royale as a technology. Anyone of you who, who have heard about Adopt Flex? Yes. So all the application that used to be developed in Adopt Flex can be easily migrated to Apache Royale because it also supports an as a programming language. You only use two and a half minutes, you have to listen to us more. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk and talk and talk. I think for our next talk though, it looks like we, we have a Princess Bride remake. It says something about a No You Montoya. You killed my father? ASF for, no. I'm, no. No? No, I don't think so. Reading is hard. So are, are we having timer issues? I never have time issues. <laughs> <laughs> All right, email from CERN, because I'm not going to do your last name. Are you in the room? There you are. Come on down. You are the next contestant on Lightning Talks. What was that, what was that title? The title, Emo will be talking about Apache Knox integration with CERN single sign-on. Oh, oh no, I single signed on to CERN one time and now Curious George doesn't have a tail, there's no cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo. You're the, Mande <laughs> you're the Mandela effect? That was you? Good job! Wow. So what happens when you sign on to CERN. All right. Is that what you're going to tell us about? Are you going to talk know. about the Mandela effect? <laughs> yeah, of course. Great. Okay. <laughs> so long as you have a solution. You ready? Let's see. Oh, I like your attitude. It, it will be fully improvised. So basically, uh, this is what I wanted to talk about, so about um, how we strengthen security at CERN. But actually, this talk, or this very short speech, will be about how to screw up your submission of the presentation for the conference. So basically, what I did this year, I wanted to submit my presentation and get my slot, but I missed the deadline. So. Uh, like last year in, um, on the conference in Halifax, the, de the deadlines were completely different. So they were uh, until the, the summer and I was not following up what's going on. I was not following, following up the mailing list and I missed the deadline. Uh, so yeah, um, that was the first mistake I made. 
Then I wanted to contact, reach out to all the organizers. I didn't get the slot. Uh, so yeah, during the conference, I was following up with Brian and others. And uh, I got my slot during the BOF session, which turned out to be quite a nice discussion. So I was really glad I got this chance. Uh, and yeah, this is where I presented actually my uh, slides about um, Apache Knox integration at CERN with the SSO. Uh, so thanks everyone who attended this, uh, this talk yesterday, actually. And uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to say. Yeah, look, we haven't had time to sit down and properly enjoy our wine, so we're going to need you to stretch these out just a little bit more. All right, so next up, though, all, all good comedy shows have a musical break, <laughs> and all really good shows come in rerun. And so where's Christopher Schultz? I don't He's right in front of you. Get your butt up here. I was looking too far away. So, who remembers? <laughs> Last season's Polaroid. Nobody? I, Were you all I that drunk? <laughs> all four of you, great. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Yeah. This is quite possibly the only lightning talk that I would actually give extra time, but no nope, psych. So, I don't know, we've, but we've, we've like stored up time. <laughs> yeah, time is an illusion. All right, are you ready? Because this is going to be awesome. I am ready. Do you want to explain to them what's about to happen? Because we learned last year that not everybody knows this song. This is free time. OK. So, I, I wanted people to know a little bit more. You need to hear? Yeah. Not loud enough? Okay. All right. So I wanted people to get to know projects that they didn't know about already because there are far too many of them. And I know, I don't know, 10. So I decided to write a little poetry. I decided to write a little poetry and let everybody know what some of these projects were that perhaps you've never heard of. We get a lot of them done in a quick amount of time. Now, I ran out of time this year to do a whole bunch of them. I wanted to do 44 projects, so I got some help from some LLMs. Oh, All right? Wait, wait, wait. Do we need a no AI help in your lightning know. talk rule? I don't want to be that Pre guy, but wait. Prepare yourselves. Um, I'm oh, not I'm prepared. So prepared. <laughs> um, wine, wine alert. Ready? Go. Ready. In the floor of the net where pixels do press. The web server flivels and throbbles in dance. With a sizzle and pop, Tomcat burbles and dives. Java gloop in a cauldron where sanity strives. No, 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 put those signs down. <clears throat> Cassandra's a wriggle slorpish delight. It wriggles and jiggles. Uh, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're going we're gonna to do real live human... Uh, Human stuff. Uh, are you guys gonna give me any music or are you gonna give oh, me a shot? Alright, wait, wait, wait. You want music? Alright, so here we go. I'm gonna do it faster this time. You better start. <clears throat> yeah. HTTPD is where it all began those years ago. Log events with Log4j to get them where they need to flow. Commons is a pile of stuff that nobody can live without. For solving algebraic woes, you may be looking for my house. Singa trains the models for the learnings oh so very deep. Allura hosts your project so the public can come take a peek. Hop orchestrates and integrates the meadows of your data flow. Concurrent widely running apps are easier with Peko. <laughs> Iceberg is a data form which stores all of your data lakes. Cassandra is a column store eventually storing states. Solar searches everything once you've got it all indexed. Flash-based apps are dead and gone. Royale was once Apache Flex. <laughs> Daffodil can rock your files and unrock if you want it to. Aravada orchestrates your scientific magic glue. Bean will stream your records fast and send them where they need to go. If Python is your drug of choice, you can swap Bean for some airflow. <laughs> Web frameworks coming out our ears, struts, turbine, click, and wicket, too. Flume will collect and move your logs, passing reliably right through. Shiro makes securing applications just a simple task, while Helix wrangles clusters of the servers that you have amassed. Da, 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 da. I'm going to have plenty of time. Just... Okay. 
Atlas helps you classify and tag and track your data fields. NiFi routes, transforms, controls whatever your solution yields. Finneract can run your bank and move some cash from A to B. To push your stuff from Jupiter to Spark, you could use Tori incubating. <laughs> <laughs> Flink does computation tasks on data streams in parallel. Mesos runs your massive code on machines, real or virtual. Unicorn runs Kubernetes like it thinks the world should be. Text indexing and practical without the use of old Lucene. <laughs> Curator keeps animals in zoos kept safe by zookeepers. Kafka streams events and queues and glues up all the universe. Arrow analyzes all as long as you've got memory hung. Marshalling your JSON files might benefit from Johnson. <laughs> Pulsar pushes messages super duper duper fast. Hadoop will chew directly through all the data you've amassed. Jenna's making easier documents for web semantics. Various kinds of logic boards could use some PLC4X. Thrift will make your data code. I'm sorry. Thrift will make your code into a set of software-friendly calls. Ambari manages Hadoop, watches, chains, and, and installs. Kayan maps classes in your code to tables in your data store, while Gora does the same for those where no sequels what they adore. Poi gives access to the stuff in proprietary documents. Kibble maps out progress by an effort's worker occupants. Druid queries myriad dimensions with alacrity. If templating has got you down, you could turn to velocity. 88 lines, about 44 projects, with four bonus projects thrown in. So if we can get three votes, we'll keep trying a new release every year until we get this thing right. Yeah. Either that or we're going to start Epic Rap Out as a software up here. And seriously, thank you, Stephen, for um, all your help this week and rolling with all the weird stuff we've thrown at you. So, well, I'm pretty excited to introduce our next speaker. It's going to be Swap Neil. He's going to talk about Apache Local Community. Um, do you have a poem or anything like that? Are you doing a poem or a song or anything like that? <laughs> well, it's tough to compete because uh, oh, we forgot oh, oh, to... Oh, musical lightning talks. Oh, see, I, I thought we were ready to announce that the new brand identity will feature a uh, jingle. Oh. It's a very long jingle. <laughs> okay, so apparently you don't like me anymore. That's basically what's happening? No, All you right. get to sing it. Oh, oh God. It's a, it's a group song. Group number. There's a kick line. Okay. All right. We'll do that. A kick line. Okay. Are you ready? Was it? All right. En enlighten us, sir, and go. Hello, everyone. So, uh, I'm going to talk about the Apache local community. So, the story started like this uh, in around like 2019. Uh, uh, we would like to conduct some events at Media, and I tried to find some people who can uh, help like uh, organizing those events in India. But interestingly, uh, there's a wide range of people uh, from Apache background in India, but I was not able to detect their physical location and, and to uh, reach out to them and uh, do something in, in the region. So this leads me to uh, give an idea like, uh, can we group uh, uh, Apache people based on geographical location uh, instead of uh, having them uh, grouping by the project? So with this idea, uh, we discussed on the uh, uh, on the con web, I said, okay, can we have something uh, where we can bring all the Apache people from the local region together so that they can share ideas and uh, bring their thoughts and, uh, and, and do something peaceful for the local community. So with this, we founded Apache Local Community. So Apache Local Community is comprised of local people from Apache uh, who work on spreading the awareness of uh, open source and Apache in general. Uh, so I'm really happy to share that currently we have uh, 10 ALC, Apache Local Community, in 5 countries. And uh, they are really playing a significant role in uh, spreading the awareness of uh, in the local region. So we started with the uh, Indoor India ALC, and then the Beijing uh, China ALC was the second one, and then we like uh, 
um, it progressed to like 10 URLs. So uh, if you think uh, you, in your region you can, uh, you have a bunch of people, they can uh, help like organizing some events and like spreading the awareness of Apache, uh, you, can, you can definitely uh, build KLC in your city or town or uh, whatever region you are. So the rules and responsibility of uh, uh, ALC is very simple. We, we work on like hosting events and uh, uh, spread the awareness of open source and Apache. And uh, we work to uh, educate the student community, developer community, and business community for the Apache. Uh, and and uh, and if you ask me, like. Uh, uh, yeah, there are multiple events that we organize, there are multiple podcasts that we did as a, as a different ALC did. There are different uh, uh, like translation work that ALC did. Uh, so we see a clear impact of ALC in, in, in the Apache ecosystem. So, uh, so this is the thing. Uh, if, if you want to know how you can start your own ALC in, in your region, so process is very simple. Uh, we have our uh, dev list of community development. So just uh, uh, put uh, in subject line put ALC and uh, and subject line put a request to establish uh, an ALC uh, in XYZ region. And what we generally found is like whenever somebody like uh, initiated that thread, suddenly like like 10, 20 people uh, from that region like uh, shows up and shows that interest. So uh, and even if you don't have like uh, uh, don't know that personally. Many people belong to your region, so you can start with like uh, uh, initiating a thread on Compet. We just have one prerequisite to start an ALC. Uh, so we have like uh, you should have like one ASF member and two PMC member in your region. Uh, and if you don't have them, don't worry. Uh, we have an uh, extension ALC where we call like uh, we have an ALC in Lagos, Nigeria. That's really interesting, right? So we were like able to reach out to Nigeria. Uh, uh, to spread this awareness of ASAP and open source. So that was an exception because we, we found like volunteers are interested but they don't have any ASF member or like two PMC members so we assigned two mentors to them and don't worry if you don't know like how to operate so ALC is very similar like it's very much uh, you can compare it's like Facebook developer circle or Google developer group so similarly the same kind of thing we have for the project. So thanks to uh, everyone for listening to this and uh, ALC is pretty a huge impact and if you want to join this journey, uh, we are here. Uh, this is Kaufman, we are founder and founder of ALC. Thank you so much everyone. So while she's coming up, let me give you the uh, title of the talk. It's Community Help Order and Metrics from Chaos, which I am pleased to be a part of. So I'm very excited to hear this talk. You know, no pressure, don't screw it up. <laughs> so, it'll be fine, it'll be good. You ready? Sure. She's like, what the hell have you got me into? <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. I got roped into this. I didn't plan for this, so thank you. Bear, please bear with me. You ready? <laughs> yes. You got this. Okay. We're a very forgiving audience. Look at them, they're all weird. I, yeah, we please. should we should do like lightning talk metrics. Ooh. Yeah, like you with have wine. Told me on. Yeah, sorry. I have measured all the I, I'm on glass number two, so now I'm getting creative. So all right, you ready? Yeah. Alright, good luck. <laughs> Alright. Thank you everyone. My name is Chan. Matt, can you hear me in the back? I know you're in a conversation, but I've got lightning talk happening right now. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is my first Apache conference, first at Community Over Code. Um, uh, so really uh, the thing I learned from all of you is that you guys don't like to be bored. Like you love chaos, you love just drama and getting into the weeds of things. So I, I do appreciate that from this group. But I'm going to talk about a different kind of chaos. Uh, chaos. C-H-A-O-S-S -S stands for Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. And the Chaos Group helps you to better understand community health. Uh, and we have a set of really great uh, tools and resources that you can use to assess your open source projects. So if you go on GitHub and you look on Insights, and Insights isn't really doing it for you, it's not telling you 
more than you, it's not telling you enough of what you want to know, come over to Chaos to figure out how you can apply metrics to your open source project. We have a ton of working groups. I think, I don't know, Brian, are we on like 30 working groups or something? No, There's... I'm done. This oh, is your okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I was pulling, uh, I went into a call a friend. Um, but oh, we well, have... I have a friend. Oh, okay. okay. Um, we have um, 11 working groups right now. 11? Yeah. Okay, sorry, not 30. 11 working groups, um, all amazing people. Uh, the first working group that I want to tell you about is the DEI badging working group that uh, recognizes people who are being inclusive and um, in their open source projects. So you can get a badge if you are uh, working towards inclusion in your open source project. Uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is our practitioner guides. If you want to do, if you want to get metrics for your open source project, but you don't really know much about data analytics or just starting off into data analytics, look at that practitioner guide. Um, these help you get started in understanding what metrics are for your project. They give you the context, why it's important, and then what tools you can use to actually start. And that's um, being uh, led by Dawn Foster. We have a metrics group. This is all about just metrics. So if you love geeking out on data, metrics, metrics models, building them out, that's the group to go to. They, they will, you will spend all of your time thinking about these metrics in that group. There is another group called the Augur team. And that is a tool that you can use that if you onboard, and it's really simple, this tool, you just, uh, it's really easy to onboard onto. Um, there's just a Docker file. There's a whole group that can help you get onto it. And um, that tool can help you find any project uh, that's out there that is open source, and you can actually find the metrics for that project. It doesn't have to be your project. You could go troll someone else's project and look it up on Augur, but uh, Augur is a great tool. Um, being led by Sean Goggins. Let's see what else. Um, and then final, finally, I have a, um, I'm plugging in my working group, which is the data science working group. Um, and we explore all different data science topics. The one that we're looking at right now is the, is exodus. What, what happens when uh, there's a huge exodus of community members that leave an open source project? Why are they leaving? Did the license change and now it's a business license and you can't use that project anymore? That might be a reason. Uh, did it get acquired by a bigger company? We're looking at all the reasons why projects have exodus of community and how we can measure it and maybe potentially predict it um, if we can. Uh, so if you want to work on exodus, uh, come to the data science working group. And that's it. Please join Chaos. Uh, it is chaos, C-H-A-O-S-S -S dot community. Uh, you can find me or Brian there, but there are a ton of chapters all over the world. Uh, we've just fun we've had Africa and Asia for quite some time now. Uh, so let me know if you have questions. Thank you. Seven seconds left. So I'm noticing a lot of math in the theme today. So where's Sean McKenney? Clearly, what, everyone I announce is at this table. You guys got lightning talks here? Yeah? Uh, apparently aspires to be a BuzzFeed writer, as he will be presenting to us the top 10 reasons not to write a top 10 list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> top 10 reasons not to do a top 10 list during a lightning talk. Get closer to the mic. You really want to hear this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Two words, no slides. Maybe you could get away with cat names. That's number one. Okay. Number two, we can't wait to hear your amusing anecdotes spoiled into a top ten list. Said no one ever. Three, you might get away with it if they like you, but they don't, and you don't even work on a good project, you're on a patch is problematic, and so even your tech stack sucks. <laughs> I got a good one. You're not even halfway and they, you've already lost them. They're on their phones. <laughs> no? 
All right, number five. You can manage to generate interest when a real topic, but you just blow it by trying to be funny. <laughs> number six. Do you think this is comedy con? It's a technology conference. <laughs> Seven. It's called attention span, okay? Too many items to keep track of. All right, number eight. Top ten list should be funny. You're not David Letterman. Okay. All right, number nine. Who put you up to this? Was it Chris? Which one? He's manipulating you. He just wants to watch you squirm. Thanks, Chris. All right, number ten. Okay, this is where the pressure is. Because you could be replaced with an AI bot. Okay, I got time. So here's where the pressure is. Here's what ChatGPT said to this question. All right, number one. Top ten reasons not to do a top ten list. Number one, they're overused. Everyone makes top ten lists. Why not stand out by doing something different? Number two, restrictive. You might have 11 great ideas or only three. Forcing it into a top ten list is just limiting. That's pretty true. Number three, fake drama. The suspense of counting down from ten to one is overrated. We all know number one is just as arbitrary as number seven. <laughs> That's true. That's true, and I'm starting to think chat GPT is better than I am. Okay, number four, it's cliche. Top ten lists are the potato chips of content. They're easy to consume, but not always satisfying. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I it. Five, ranking is hard. Do you put the funny point at number four or save it to number one? <laughs> it's an existential crisis waiting to happen. <laughs> that feels pretty real. Okay, number six. BuzzFeed has it covered already. They've already made every possible top ten list you can think of. Why can you do this? Yep. Seven. Everyone skips to the end. Admit it. Most people scroll straight to number one without reading the rest. Mm -hmm. well, that's probably true, too. Eight. It's lazy. Why dig deep into a topic when you can just step through a list? A deep dive can be more rewarding. Yeah, there's not going to be a dive in a lightning talk, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, eight, it's lazy. Oh, I already did that one. <laughs> Number nine, unnecessary pressure. Who needs the stress of coming up with exactly ten reasons? It's a lot of pressure, honestly. Okay, yeah. And the top ten reason for not doing a top ten list, according to ChatGPT, is you'll end up making one anyway by the time you reach number ten. You've already written a top ten list proving you couldn't resist the temptation. <laughs> All right, so here's where the really hard part is. Who did better? ChatGPT. Oh, <laughs> Seriously? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a tough room. Right. A plus humans. A plus humans. I don't know. Should we uh, drop these down to four minutes? Because the suspense is not here. Uh, there's going to be no earth shattering kaboom again in three seconds. Two. Uh, maybe. One. No boom. No boom. No boom. No but since apparently the AIs are in charge of lightning talks now, I decided to let them introduce them too. Oh, okay. You ready? You need the mic? <laughs> no, I almost can't say this with a straight face. So for our next lightning talk, courtesy of, well, I actually use Bing. Uh, welcome to the summer of CVE's Olympics. Think of this as the Olympics, but instead of athletes, we have vulnerabilities competing for the gold medal in chaos. Clearly the AI did not know we already had the chaos talk. Our events include the 100 meter dash to patch, the synchronized swimming of exploits, and the marathon of zero days. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the spectacle of bugs trying to outdo each other and causing mayhem. Let the vulnerability games begin! How did, how did it do? Did you like well, that? Thank you for preparing for my talk more than I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of wanted to know. So Don Hoagland, take it away. Uh, thank you. Um, last time I did 
one of these. I finish in three minutes. I'm going to try to set my record. Uh, as I said, I, I did no preparation. I just thought of a few things to say. And I'll try to do that. Make a lot of jokes. Try to see how drunk you are. Woo! So, um, as the AS, ASF tries to form the world around to be a better place, of course the world around us is also forcing the ASF into certain uh, uh, shapes and forms. And for most of us, uh, CRA is the most important force that has been pressing on us, except for our party cloud stack, it's been brought from. So, whatever we do is mostly, over the last year, is mostly formed by Broadcom. I think that's about the serious part. This is about journeys, but I, I noticed a parallel with uh, games. So there's eternal games and eternal journeys. And uh, finite games and finite journeys. So mine are journeys, not games. But if you hear journey, please think game. Um, the, the, the infinite journey, of course, is, is getting uh, cloud stack uh, delivered with the next version, the next version, get it rid of bugs, make it the greatest product ever. Uh, and and uh, finite journeys are CVEs. The first CVE that ever got to cloud stack was his uh, version 4.0.0 snapshot. And forget the 4, it's just CloudStack 4, which is a part of CloudStack, so all the other numbers are just, just the real version. And that stuck around a lot, and I had to get rid of that, but it was not in a version, so there was no real way to get rid of it and say this version is fixed by that version, because it wasn't in the version. Okay, skip forward this summer. We had the Olympics in Paris. Great. I cycled there, which was quite an achievement and a lot of confluence. And because it's uh, 600 kilometers, thereabouts, with my uh, 30 kilos of uh, bike, including baggage, and also, especially on the way back in the uh, Belgian Ardennes, was quite a nice journey. Forget all that. Oh, wow. I'm going too slow. I am about four seconds from my record. So now I'm a real lightning talker. Um, the real message, by the way, let's get to that because I only have a minute and a half, is um, until 4th of April this year, CloudStack had, including the, the, the phony one, five CVs. Since um, April 4th, we had 13 security reports, one of which we refused. It was one by uh, one of the many platinum uh, sponsors of this conference, formerly known as the California Food Company. <laughs> and, um, I think they also submitted three that were. That leads to a lot of releases, and uh, one of the lessons I've learned is that we should release immediately. Because we, we've been releasing four at a time, sometimes two, sometimes one, but mostly four at a time, and it's taking too long. Um, and it's... It, it's um, Oh yeah, that, that's one thing I wanted to say. Last time I talked about releasing and how I hate releasing. Uh, it was, was a quite interesting experience to look back and see myself hating and releasing. And now, the most important thing I'm doing is this year is releasing all those things. By the way, four of those CPs was while I was on my way to Paris. So, I'm lucky. <laughs> I just, yeah, 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 but I have no clue, so why did I wait for the... Okay, Monday I'm gonna release the next one. Ah, shit! Still not made it. Yeah, so you win the Finally You Saw Your Time Award.
Long distance high five. There you go. I'm excited for Brian to introduce the next talk because 100% true facts, his watch just told him that he had a fall while he was sitting there drinking his wine. <laughs> you be is, okay? Um, sure. I'm pretty sure the next talk is about a new project, Apache Starlight Express. It pretty much is. So, Redeem, um, can Thank you, you for uh, the come on up? Thank you for the two people who got that joke. <laughs> now, this will all kind of tie together because the title of this talk is how roller skating can improve your physiology. So the whole falling thing, people who know me, this is my jam. It's so, rollerblading. Oh, it's, ro it's roller skating. Well, okay, but he's talking yeah, about look, I'm reading it right here. <laughs> what? Get off the stage and let him find you. Yeah, okay. You ready to go? Yeah, sure. You sure? This is some crap. Yeah, that's your mic. <laughs> so you're good to go. You're not wearing any wheels, though. Yeah, wait, wait, there's no, I mean, this is stylish, but there are no wheels on your feet. Oh, yeah, um, unfortunately, I need your wheels. <laughs> Authenticity, my friend, Authenticity. All right, let's go. Hang on a second, and... Okay, so I'm with us to the new world. I'm by the team, Andrew, from Kenya. Right, so, um... I guess this is the last stop. Um, Brian said this is the last stop. No! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, I guess we've had a um, very, very interesting conference so far. And I know most of us don't really care about our health. Is that true? Don't do care, care about your health? Yeah, yeah. Do you care about our health? Not enough to go to the gym. <laughs> okay. Have anyone um, ever skate, roller skating before? Oh, okay, that's awesome. Right. So uh, today I'll be talking about um, how to improve on your physiology using roller skating. Yeah. So um, so um, right. so I guess um, do all of us know what roller skating is about, or does anybody have any idea? Or no one has no idea about roller skating. So I guess uh, roller skating um, is a recreational activity where we used to skate with um, four players, we have inline skating which is three players, then um, we have squat skating which is four players parallel to each other. You guys know that already? Alright, so, um, right, so um, I'll talk about three aspects which is um, roller skating helps you to um, increase your, your heart rate, your pumping action. Like for example, when you run, like you know your heart beats and stuff like that. Yeah, but roller skating helps you do that better. Yeah. So um so I guess we we'll talk about um we we'll talk about your muscular strength and endurance. Yeah, like it really helps you do that better as compared to running. I guess um most of you run and if you joint pains, I don't know if anyone feels joint pains in you know. Yeah, roller skating can help you that. Like, it doesn't really, really stress your knee a lot. You know, like, just like, go like this. Oh, demo, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> alright, so, um, alright, so we're gonna talk about balance and coordination. I guess most of you, um, if I throw around on the floor, you're gonna fall. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you, if you work on the snow, you fall, or any of these suffers, right? If uh, you find it difficult to balance, right? Yeah, so roller skating helps you balance, like it helps you balance and coordination. For example, um, if let me say you're working towards a door and maybe you by mistake um, slide up and fall, like roller skating helps you balance. For example, um, can anyone balance like this? Like, <laughs> do it, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, roller skating helps that better, like, you know, balance very well. Right, so, um, when I talk about your joint health, yeah, your joints, yeah, like, you know, when you run, you, like, you know, you... <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> so, roller skating takes it easy on your joints, so that's one. And then, we talk about uh, metabolic effects. Um, 
Do you want, which one you want? The other one? <laughs> that was fun. I might have some jokes. You want you want the forking one? Some joke. You just want to tell jokes. Joke. Yeah. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, your other talk, stop forking, stay contributing, has this whole AI thing about messy breakups with your code base. <laughs> <laughs> and and my favorite line: Remember, it's not you, it's Git. <laughs> <laughs> AI with your jokes, Mr. Funny Man. You ready to go? Come on over here. Okay. You ready? Prep I, I think so. I did not prepare much. I think oh. like to talk, I'm not prepared for this whole thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will just say whatever comes in my I mind. feel like we're going to have to do a little bit more gatekeeping next year. I'm just saying. All right. Kids, are you ready? Yeah, sure. All right. Let's go. Five minutes is enough. Okay. So... How many of us are using dark mode in our system? What do you think? What could be the reason? It's a joke time, so let's... <laughs> Any guesses? Um, because the light attracts bugs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I have enough time. I don't have much. Why do Java developers wear glasses? What, what do you think? Why do they? <laughs> why? Why not? <laughs> okay. They don't see sharp. <laughs> okay, let's let's think about a scenario. Um, a squirrel walking into a bar and walks up on a table, like two tables, one by one. What what it will ask? A uh, uh, hypothetical scenario where a squirrel is walking into the bar. Oh, solid. And one table to another. What it can ask? May I join you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I join you? Yeah. <laughs> How many programmers does it take to change a light bulb? Four. 
Four. <laughs> Zero. Why? Because oh, that's how you start counting. Uh, that's a hard <laughs> it's, <laughs> a <laughs> it's a hard way to draw this one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, apart from the software side, this thing a uh, bit different. What do you think? Why don't skeletons fight each other? Skeletons usually don't fight each other. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, they don't have words. Okay. Why don't eggs tell jokes? Eggs, yeah. They clack up. Whoa. <laughs> okay, nice, nice, thanks. <sighs> okay, I don't have much uh, joke apart from this. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now uh, a serious, a serious line. So yeah, uh, I, I put one proposal uh, to talk about don't uh, stop faulting, stop contributing. So that was one uh, that I put in the uh, form, uh, form. So yeah, I wanted to say that uh, most of the time we as an open source developer or software engineer, whenever we use uh, open source software, we right now have multiple options, multiple alternatives to. Uh, uh, to use features and many times we find, find it out that some of the features or modules are missing in one software we easily try to find out in Google which other software can provide those features so my thinking is that rather rather doing that we can deep dive into the code base and check if we can implement those features um, if, if the design is aligned with those and also if, if okay so one analogy I have so I recently uh, heard the historical speech from John F. Kennedy where he was mentioning all uh, citizens to work for public service so the statement was ask not Okay, ask not what. <laughs> so Alright, so what do we. Yeah, I'm distracted by. Like, oh. Chris Wells. Chris Wells. So when. Thoughts of an 11 year old, which really for the night is pretty much appropriate. I'm worried because I told me all of everybody was over 21. <laughs> so, Alright. Come on up, Chris. There will be no throwing of clothing, young lady, up here. Great, great. Settle down. <laughs> it's not that kind of stage show. Are you ready? Yeah, all right. Get over. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. You ready, sir? All right. Thoughts of an 11 year old with Chris Wells? Go. Okay. So, uh, this is not going to be on par with the funding we've had, so I apologize for that. Uh, I was having some thoughts. Um, and this 11-year-old, these are more poignant thoughts than perhaps the, uh, the locker room talk you might have been thinking. In uh, 1992, I was 11 years old. Um, I'd been homeschooled my entire life up until that point. There was a bunch of mitigating circumstances that led to me going to public school. Public school is scary. For those teachers in the audience, you know. I was entering a new environment. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't know the norms of how to behave. I didn't know the rules, either the ones that were written in the books saying, you know, this is what you have to do to not get a detention. I didn't know the rules of how to act around other people. It was confusing. I wanted to contribute. I wanted to share the stuff that I knew, the stuff that I was excited about. I wanted to help with the after school activities. I wanted to be on a chess team. I wanted to play sports. I was super excited. But as we know, elementary school kids can be rotten sometimes. So while many people were super nice, there were a contingent of those people who were not very nice. 
which led to several days of me coming home and feeling really upset. I was frustrated. I didn't know why it wasn't working the way I envisioned in my head. Like, I'd plan at night what I would say the next day, who I'd try to talk to, how I'd try to make an entrance into a conversation. And it just always felt like it fell flat. Um, so I struggled with that for quite a while. It wasn't until I met some people that kind of got me, and that I got them, that I was able to find acceptance within that group, that I started to feel like myself again. Now, moving to the future, our organization, ASF, we're constantly bringing new people in here. We're constantly inviting people to come and to contribute, to promote software for the public good, and that's awesome, that's amazing. I grew up not having a ton of money and open source software really springboarded my career because I could install Linux on my desktop computer. I didn't have to pay for a Microsoft license. I could just use it and I could help with that. And there were people who could help me. For those people who are coming to this organization, this might be the first time that they are interacting with people with like ideas. This might be the first time that they're experiencing that collaborative nature that makes organizations like the ASF so special, so important. There's definitely room for those individuals to feel scared, to feel frustrated, to feel thwarted, to have a good idea and then to be shot down immediately on the list or whatnot. I'll tell you that my interest in the ASF was great. I had a bunch of people who were super supportive, super friendly, super kind, and for the most part, y'all are that. You're awesome, and I appreciate you. There's always room for building consensus and having discussions, and that is, that's what we're based on. Coming to consensus, having discussions. But on behalf of Levin and me, I would petition us as a group that as we're seeking consensus, as we're having those discussions, we don't ask those people coming into those conversations to have thicker skins. We ask ourselves to have softer hearts. Because truly, the only way we're going to build a bigger, better community is by bringing new people in. And the only reason that they'll stay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not there. Denver, it's hot. <laughs> the only reason that they'll stay is that they'll feel like they're able to contribute, that they'll feel that they'll be able to make contributions that matter, and that they'll feel welcome, and that they're amongst friends. So anyway, that's my lightning talk. I didn't want to end it on a sad note. That is a happy note. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. You've got Chris. I was going to throw some underwear your way. So, so um, I, I want to say. Amazing. Thank you, actually. That was an incredible bookend because that was the last lightning talk completely by accident because he submitted it in the form of about 20 minutes ago. But <laughs> my first experience in the ASF was giving a talk at an Apache Con and a bunch of people I had never met before in my entire life acted like we've been best friends since we were born. And that was, that was what I imprinted on in the Apache Software Foundation. And so uh, I say it was a good bookend because we started with the keynote from Chris Kersey who talked about how much this group of people that he had never met before had meant to him for the last 25 years and that his entire career was built on Apache Software Foundation projects and here he was to tell us about that really badass Iron Man helmet. And then you wrapping up by telling us how that is important, that community is important to us. So thank you. That was actually a really solid ending. High five. Woo!